This video is sponsored by Envato Elements. More about them in a bit. What's going on? Ethan J here and welcome back to the channel. Today we're kicking off a new series called Collabo Shop, where I take your half done designs and I finish them. This series should be a lot of fun. It will give me a chance to work on things I probably never would have thought of and I get to collab with you guys. If you want to be part of one of the episodes, just send your half-finished PSD to collaboshop at ethanjdesign.com. Don't forget to include your name and your at so I can tag you. Also, make sure to include your logo, whether that's in the PSD or in a separate file altogether. That way I can add it to the final graphic. But yeah, with that all said now, let's jump into Photoshop and get started. Okay, so for the first collab, we have this design that was sent in by Lance Heinzman. He wrote, this design was partially inspired by you. I got this far and didn't really know where I wanted to take it. All right, thanks for sending that in Lance. I'ma see what I can do. I already really like the composition of this and the 3D pickaxes look dope. So I'm just gonna go through these layers, see what everything is. What color lookup are you using? Make it pop 15. I see you are a man of culture. With this background yellow shape, I'm gonna delete the gradient and we'll create our own with a solid color and masks. I just start making my own gradients this way as I have more control. So I'll create a dark orangish kind of color like that, clip it to our yellow background, create an inverted mask and just paint in where I want the darker colors to go. Then I'll take a look at the camera raw filter and play around with some of these settings. Bring down the yellows a bit and mess with these sliders until we get something I like the look of. Cool. Now I want to update this pickaxe element a little bit. It already looks really good. I just want to try and elevate it a touch more. First, I want to get a selection of just the blues so I can edit the blues and the gold separately. So I'll just get that. Neaten up this master we've got as well. Then I'll duplicate this pickaxe layer, pull it in a group with our new mask and turn down the saturation. But I'll invert the mask because I just want to edit the golds in this group. Now I got this bunch of adjustment layers that I use for gold stuff and they just essentially make things look more yellow and more contrasty, you know? I want to make this gold look even more shiny. So I'll make two duplicates of the pickaxe layer and I'll invert the top duplicate and set the blend mode to different. Merge these two layers together, turn back on the original and set this newly merged layer to overlay. And this just adds a little more realistic contrast. Right, now let's focus on this blue diamond stuff. I'll add a light blue inner glow, create a solid blue color and we'll change that to color dodge. Maybe make the blue a little bit lighter as well, like that. Then I'll just paint in at the bottom where I want this lighter blue color to be. So here's what we're left with. This is the before and this is what I added. We just gave it a little bit more oomph. What's next? I like these flares and where they're positioned, but they are a bit pixelated. So I'm adding my own flares at some point, but first let's add in some glows to this pickaxe. Nothing too over the top yet. Then I got this photo that I want to bring to the front of the graphic. So we'll put this around here, add in some camera roll filter to get everything looking a bit more lively. And I'll also desaturate the yellows and his shoes and socks here because we don't need none of that yellow court hue. I got this car out of a snowy mountain that I think will look perfect with this graphic. I want to put it somewhere here, but smaller. An easy way to extend this lower part is using the crop tool, extend it down and then just click this content aware box. And like magic, Photoshop just kind of takes a sec and does all the hard work for you. And that looks pretty good. We'll just position this around here, maybe scale it down a little. I want to make this leg look like it's behind the snowy hill thing. So we'll just sort that out with a mask. Then we just kind of need to sort out this front foot because right now it definitely does not look like he's standing in snow at all. I got this avalanche aftermath kind of looking photo from Envato. That should hopefully help remedy this situation. I'll paint in some of it behind the foreground leg like this. But before I carry on with any more, let me just color correct this background mounting because I kind of need it to match the look of this snow. Cool, this is looking much better. I'll add in some of this broken snow to the front and a bit more in the background like that. Then I'll add in some sprays of snow with a particle brush just to finish things off. I wanna try adding these distant mountains behind our main mountain. So I'm just gonna get a quick sky select of this. We'll drop that in and add some sky behind it like that.
Those background mountains looked like so we're going to act like that never happened. I'm going to add some orange glow to this sunrisey looking background like this. I want to try out this secondary nuggets logo in the yellow background. Change the blend if and then set it to overlay. Now I want to add in some color correction. I'm not completely done yet, but sometimes I need to see what the final color correction will look like while I'm still working. Of course, I'm going to use some of my own LUTs from my pack. Link in the description if you want to check those out. And this is in a good place so far. Everything is looking good. I've got to add some highlights to our foreground photo, mainly around the edges like this. Then using a hue and saturation, we'll add in some of that blue light reflection from the pickaxes. We'll do the same to this background photo as well. Add some highlights like that and that same blue glow to the underside of his arm. All right, let's add in some snow because why not? It's already a snowy kind of graphic. Move this around and get rid of any snowflakes in front of the player's face. Then I'll duplicate the snow layer, move it around and add in a motion blur. This will just make the snow look a bit more realistic. Talking of realism, let's just add in some random falling human bones to the photo. <laughs> so I'll position this over here and what we do is we use that same gold coloring from the pickaxe. Add that in, and it's just the same technique again. We'll duplicate, set the top one to difference, merge the two duplicates together, and I'll set this one to linear light this time. But invert it, and that looks pretty good. Just need to up the contrast a little bit. And yeah, it's not super clear that it's a bone, but screw it, let's add a field blur and I'll dot a few more of these around the design. Then to finish up, I'll add in some flares around a gold trim and a blue one at the edge. And there you go. Here is the final graphic. You can see this is where we started. This was the plan that I had. And then this is where we finally ended up. I think it turned out great and thank you again Lance for sending this one in. I would have never thought to make this otherwise. I also would have never been able to make this design without amazing stock assets. That's why I got to thank today's sponsor Envato Elements. High quality stock photos can really make your work stand out against the sea of other designers only using free assets. And Envato Elements has over 50 million stock images to choose from. And with unlimited downloads, you'll never run out of options. But the good thing with Elements is that it's not just photos. With a subscription, you get access to all kinds of things like Photoshop brushes, actions, and even a whole library of fonts. And their super unique feature of 3D assets where you can find, position, and download a 3D object to perfectly fit your design. All of this for less than $20 a month. That's crazy. And using my link in the description, you can get 50% off an annual subscription. So if you're looking for a way to take your graphics to the next level, check them out and see everything that they have to offer. Thanks again to Envato for sponsoring the video. Okay, going on to our next collab, we have this submission by Hassan. He wrote, big fan of your designs, Ethan. Thank you. Let me know if you'll be able to hop on this design with me. Well, that's exactly what I'm about to do. I've never done a Carl Anthony Towns graphic before and those throwback jerseys are insane. To begin with, I'm going to go over everything, turn off the color correction so we can start with a blank canvas, so to speak. I really like the city photo that you use. I don't know if it's actually Minnesota or not, but I really like the colors. We're definitely going to use that for sure. The haircut out on this background photo of Cat is amazing. But this front one, I think we can make a little bit better. So I'll get a mask, take away this outer edge area, then using this hairbrush that I actually made a while back, I'll paint back in on a mask like this, even on the beard area as well. Now let's look in this camera raw. I'm going to mess with the settings a little just to get everything looking a bit more neutral. We'll do the same with the background photo as well. And I think this is good. I got this wolf cut out that I want to use as one of the main background elements. So we'll just drop that in somewhere about here. Using a solid color will make this whole selection a Timberwolves blue. Then we'll just need to numb the edges of the mask like that. We'll add in a darker blue color for a nice gradient in the lower left. I'll also add the wolf on top of the solid color as well. Desaturate it and change it to soft light overlay. Yeah, I think we'll stick with overlay, right? Next, we need to bring back in that cityscape photo that may or may not be Minnesota. Fade out this lower corner like this. The same at the top as well. And then we'll just make the blues in the background match the blues of the photo a bit better. I'll add back in our background photo of Cat. Put that wolf mask over the photo as well, but obviously just not on this top part. We can bring back in our smaller photo. I want this one to be more centered though, like around here, and maybe a little bit bigger. 
and I got this 3D Wolves logo that I made that matches the jerseys. There'll be a little pop-up in the top corner of exactly how this was made if you're interested. Go check that out after this video. I just need to make this green look a little less dull. I'll also add in some shadow and highlighty color like that and I'll just paint those in using a mask. Now I've got these ice photos that I want to use and whoa, Photoshop, sort yourself out. Okay, so yeah, I want to use these. I'll set them to screen and eh, this looks kind of trash. Okay, I'm trying this fir tree texture instead because I was very close to scrapping this entire thing after that whole eye stuff. But this is actually looking pretty good. I think we can definitely run with this. I just need to find the right blend mode and I think linear burn works. All right, back in our main comp. And this actually suits everything really well, to be honest. I've got these wolf photos that I want to drop in as well. I want them to be a bit bigger than normal wolves too. But I'll flip this one and put him in the foreground like this. Scale this one up a bit as well. And then we need to add in some color correction that makes the walls look a bit more blue. Then using a dark exposure layer, I'll paint in where I want all the highlights to be. I'll do the same thing with Cat as well. I want the edges to be brighter where the glow from this text will be. And on the subject of glows, I'll get this green color, set it to screen, and we'll start to paint in our glows for the text. You know the drill, hue and saturation, change the blend if, and this will be our green light reflection around the edges of all of the cutouts. I'm also gonna add in some orange glow as well to both of the wolves' eyes. That definitely looks pretty fun. cool. We'll add in some shadows underneath all of these foreground cutouts and some atmospheric smoke in the background as well. That never hurt. I'll add some more smoke between the wolf and cat to add some more depth and separate the photos. Finally, we can add in some blue glows to the brightest area of this smoky, hazy kind of area as well. Now this is looking good already, which is a great sign, but I'm definitely interested to see what it all looks like with some color correction. So I'll just add that in. Right, this is in a good place so far. I'm gonna look at the original CC folder and this looks really good as well, to be honest. I'll go through and see if there's a way I can combine the two different color corrections. I think we're pretty close to being done here. So in the corners, I wanted to add in some fir tree stuff. They obviously look super illustrated, but I'm going to add in some blur, change the contrast to make them look a lot darker. And there, you'd never know that they weren't real. And to wrap it up, I don't know if this is going to work, but I thought to add in this little campfire thing, paint in some reddy orange glows, and then we just gotta drop in the fire, like that. Add another smaller one in the bottom to make the lower area look really bright. Then we gotta add in some hue and saturation to the sides of these cutouts where all the light would naturally be. Before I forget, we need to add in some fire embers and a few of the light effects from my packs for good measure. And here is the final graphic. Again, we can see where we started off at, my initial plan for the design, and then finally where we ended up. A big thank you to Hassan for sending in your PSD. This one turned out really, really dope. So here's our two final graphics from the episode. Drop a comment down below with which one you preferred. And if you want to be part of one of these collabs, just send in your partially finished PSD to collaboshop at ethanjdesign.com. But I hope you liked the video. Drop a like if you want to see more of these. Hit the subscribe and notification bell and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.